All right, so now let's look at our model classes. So um, I've done some importation, which guys were not, I didn't expose it, so I'll clear this. I don't need these ones. Um, I don't also need this. I don't need this. So this is all I need. So from SQL Academy, I need column, I need integer, I need string. I need foreign key, data, and boolean, and then test. Then I need my connection, my base from my DB connection. I need relationship from SQL uh, Alchemy ORM. ORM simply means object relational mapping. I will need that, I will need relationship. Then from date time, I will need date time. So now let's look at the user model. So this is a user model. First thing we have is the ID. So every database must have an ID. Every table in a database, um, wherever you are saving, you must first have ID. So I have the ID. So this is the table name. And then I have the ID, which is an integer, a primary key, and then auto index. So automatically it will generate any time you save a user. You don't need to write this. You don't need to add this to your request. I need a username, which is a string. I need a user email, which is also a string. And I wanted to make it unique. So it is one and only one. Every user wants to have one email. And if you don't have that email, like if you have multiple emails, it will work. But you can use the same email twice to um, register as a user. Location, um, yes, it's a string. It can be now. GPS address, set string, it can be now. Nullable means it can be left empty. I mean, it can be left empty. The password, which is also a string. The dates you are added, um, I think. Let me change, take this off. I don't want to update it. I don't want to update the date time anytime the user is updated. And then whether you are active or you are inactive. On initial um, creation, I set it to true. So when you have been added by an admin, it will be true, meaning you are active. But when you use the registration link, uh, it will be false. So that's how we write the logic. And then we have the attendance. So on attendance, we have the, I the ID of the table. We have the user ID, which user. And then we have the action. So the action can be logged and log out, log in and log out. But it's not nullable. You can't leave the action nullable. It can never be left empty. And then action time, the time that you log in or the time that you log out. And then we created a relationship. I created a relationship between the attendance table and then the user. Do so, this will help me anytime I'm fetching the attendance. I can use join outer join or inner join, and then I can use this to join to a user. So I can fetch attendance belonging to a particular user with a username on top of it. All right. And then we have the rule. So, so far with the rule, we have the rule table, the ID for the table, the name of the rule. I think, let me change this to row name. Row. Let me change this to row name. Row name to make it better. So we have the name of the rule, then the rule. <laughs> we have the description, what the rule should be done or what the rule should be doing. And then the day the rule is created. I think with this, anytime you update, I want to keep the time that you have updated it. And then we have the user rule. And this is where we assign rule actually. So we we'll put the user ID and then a the rule ID in this table. So anytime we put this in this table, and you are logging in, that is where the logic of whether you are just a user or an admin will come in. And then we create a relationship. So I create a relationship between the row and then the user row. And then I create another relationship between the row, the row, user row, and then the user, the user table. So this is our model for now. Um, any question can be asked for further explanation.